these three builds will let you cruise through the Armored Core 6 campaign without the grey hairs. I've ordered them in terms of user friendliness and power. Our first build will essentially allow you to play while your brain is AFK, while our last build will require every ounce of coordination and skill that you have. All three of these builds are powerful and capable of easing your way through the campaign. However, it's our very last build that's truly S tier, capable of leaving your friends in awe while making mincemeat of the game's strongest bosses. The first build I call Bulletstorm, and it's inspired by feedback received from newer players in the comments, talking about how straightforward they found its playstyle. Let's take a look at it in action and break down the strategy, playstyle, and build. You can clearly see why this is our most AFK build. The dual Gatling guns allow you to basically hold down the triggers until the guns overheat, while looking for openings to unleash the pain on your victims using the dual Songbird grenade launchers. You may have also noticed that we're basically in an armoured wheelchair. And the reason for that is that this wheelchair is bloody fast, allowing us to both field a platform of heavy weapons while keeping decently high armour and movement speed. As an added bonus, it allows us to fire our Songbird shoulder mount grenade launchers without needing to stop. This is an absolute winning combination for players who don't want to stress too much. What makes this even better is that we use a generator with huge energy capacity, allowing us to assault boost all over the map, and even finish enemies with a kick if we wish. Well, as much as one can kick without legs anyway. This build is great for general gameplay, because it has mobility, rapid fire and stopping power. You'll basically crush all the objectives and even do okay against the bosses. It's based around dual Hu Ben Gatling guns, dual Songbird grenade launchers, a VP 44D head for that stagger resistance, a Mind Alpha core, Nacht Reicher arms for that perfect gun tracking, and Fortaleza legs for those mega fast Paralympics vibes. FCS G2 PO5 gives us strong medium range performance, which is where we'll be doing the majority of our combat. The Santai generator gives us the largest energy capacity in the game, allowing us to cruise all over the map. Now, you can trade in this energy capacity for quicker boost speed and recharge, but I personally prefer the AFK cruise control because it lets you just destroy objectives without even stopping. So, what are the downsides? Well, it lacks an absolute stopping power, so you'll be grinding away at some of the bosses a little longer than you might otherwise. It's also not quite as bursty in its movements as the builds with legs, especially in the vertical dimension, which can make it difficult to find the right angle to launch the songbirds from. So if you really want to take it up a notch, you'll want to try this next build. Based heavily on our last video here, this build has fantastic stagger potential and burst DPS at close to medium range. Let's take a look. You can see, based on what it did to Balteus, that this is a single target monster. The dual shotguns provide massive stagger and a decent punch of close range damage, while the dual needles pretty much just melt everything. I call this one the Shot God. It's silent. 
While not immensely more difficult to play than our first build, it does require some knowledge of positioning and timing in order to make the most of the shotgun stagger and actually land the needle hits. The great synergy here is that you can virtually stun lock enemies, as you can see here on Juggernaut. Almost impossible to believe this encounter gave anybody trouble when watching this build stun melting it. It's based around dual Zimmerman shotguns, giving us insane stagger power, while also contributing decent damage even up to mid-range. In our shoulder slots, we have two stun needles, which provide the finishing power after the stagger kicks in. Our head, core and arm slots are actually identical to our last build for the same reasons with the legs of course being swapped out for reverse jointed ones to give us extra vertical mobility to both close on aerial enemies as well as position for ground and pound attacks with the stun needles. The BST G2 booster gives us decent boosting speed while we maintain the FCS G2 slash PO5 for the decent mid and close range performance. The VP20C generator is just about the only thing capable of feeding our tremendous energy requirements courtesy of the dual needles. It also gives us that nice blue glow out of our thrusters. As a result of our energy needs and the fact that the needles actually stop us momentarily to fire, we have this build's greatest weak point. Issues with mobility. It's not quite as fast and mobile as you would want given where its weapons operate best. Having to stop momentarily to fire the needles exposes it to attack, especially if taking on large swarms of enemies. Therefore, this build can be thought of more as a single target and small group specialist. It will certainly still mop the floor with the campaign if you know how to manage terrain cover and movement, but it's definitely nowhere near as AFK as our first build in these engagements. But who really cares about that when you can melt Balteus like it's completely irrelevant? So if you think that the Shot God has impressive DPS, Believe me when I tell you, you ain't seen nothing yet. Our last build is S tier and capable of making mincemeat out of the biggest, baddest bosses in the game. It was inspired by the no hit, no damage videos that have been recently circulating, melting AC6's strongest bosses. I call this one Three Punch Man. Here it is. Okay, okay, maybe that wasn't fair, that was a low rank battle. Let's do the number one S tier encounter in the arena instead. Alright, alright, that was too easy to... How about a boss then? Maybe someone tanky like Cataphract. Code 2 3, enemy HP confirmed. Presently exchanging fire. If it weren't for a stray machine gun bullet, that cataphract run would have been a no damage 20 second kill. This is how insanely powerful dual melee builds are in AC6. And if you're thinking, well, Omen, why don't you show us a takedown of Cell 240 then? The answer is because I don't want to spoil the battle for people and I probably lack the skill to do it well. See, while this build is stupendously powerful, it also requires an astute knowledge of animations, frame timing, and hitboxes. The pile bunker, especially, is extremely wonky when it comes to hit registration. The movement jank is a good reminder that, at its heart, this is very much still a console game, and this build, more than any other, will punish you for deficiencies in the game's general design. So tread at your own risk. The payoff, as you can see, is unbelievably satisfying enemy encounters when things do go right. The arena is a complete joke. Every tetrapod enemy is a joke. Most bosses are a joke. 
On top of this, the build has the best all-round movement, mostly consisting of Firmatsa parts, we have an extremely lightweight core that's able to close distance to opponents in the blink of an eye. Quite handy when you rely almost exclusively on melee weapons. We use a laser lance because of its astounding ability to close distance quickly. Most charge hits with it will immediately stagger most enemies. If they don't, well, that's why we carry a Zimmerman shotgun in our right hand to guarantee stagger. Once the enemy is down, we switch to the Pile Bunker, one of the strongest burst damage weapons in the game. If we're lucky enough to land a direct hit with it following the laser lance and shotgun, you can guarantee that any regular enemy in AC will go down immediately. And most bosses will have about a third, if not half of their AP taken away. The Songbird is the wild card. You can tell that I have a thing for stopping power in the shoulder slots, but really, you can put anything here. If you want something to give you mid and long range potential, you can slot a large missile launcher here instead. I simply use the Songbird in case I need a way to deliver a huge amount of firepower at close range without charging a melee attack. It also makes day-to-day -day mission play much easier, since it has AoE damage that can clear most adds without trouble. This is the full loadout list for you to try, just remember to assign your OS points appropriately. This build uses a combination of kinetic, explosive energy and stagger damage, so you want to make sure you're maximizing all of those points. Pulse Armor will also allow you to do some of those mad suicide charges while coming out mostly in one piece. If you still want more, check out the build that got me through the entire game here. I'll see you on the next one.